Sir Michael, thank you very much for speaking to us. Yes. You're now no longer a Member of Parliament. It's a long, long time since you've been in this position out of Parliament. That's right. It's the first time in my life I'll be out of Parliament and no longer I'm out of Parliament and no longer would be uh, referred to as a Member of Parliament. One of the things that I've seen recently are these cabinet papers that have now been released after 30 and 40 years from, from the 60s and 70s. And one of the things, these Australian cabinet papers, one of the things that's very interesting is how pessimistic the Australians were about the future of Papua New Guinea. There was almost um, a relief that Australia was getting rid of this problem. How do you feel now about that sort of attitude? Well, I think that, uh, as I said, you know, it's a lack of uh, understanding the indigenous people and their kind of thinking. I think uh, the administration was set up here uh, for people to work closely with people and win them aside, but I don't think they did a good job for us to understand each other, you know. and. Uh, one thing I remember very well is that, uh, you know, I was a school teacher. I taught with a lot of Australians in Brandy Secondary School, Utu Secondary School, and Tuswap Secondary School. I can speak the same English language that I speak. I can work with them, talk to them, but uh, when we get out of the classroom, I'm treated as a, you know, different person. But yet, at the same time, we know each other very well. And I think that's one thing that the Australian mistake they made was uh, when they were administering the place. They may have taught us we would be a bunch of people like what they did with the Africans, the British and the others did to Africans. And the whole of Africa, same attitude. They, they created hatred between the indigenous people and themselves. Australian administration created that. And it is whether them or people who came to early colonizing, because I remember going through a tobacco factory in uh, Goroka, you know, Matus, a South African. He was running a tobacco factory, employing uh, kids 12 to 15 years of age. And how he, that man called Matus mistreated them. I went through with a group of Australian journalists. You, you were not one of them at the time. I think, I think Gus Smiles was, though. Yes. Gus and myself. Gus and myself. I said to Gus, look, mate, don't worry about me. I'm okay. I'm, I'm talking to the boys here. And they left me outside. And they were invited by the South Africana. All Australian journalists were up drinking tea and on the balcony of uh, the South African uh, Matus. He later on owned the uh, Yellow Beach Motel. But he wouldn't let you in? No, he wouldn't let me in because I was wearing my lap lap and my uh, sandal. So they're not good in his eyes, you know. That, that's how, you know. And this also created everywhere in Papua New Guinea. In the hotels in KVI, exactly the same. I taught with three Australian teachers there. Even though I'm, I always reckon myself, I'm a, a very nice man after all. I don't have any hatred in me. And I thought, you know, they treat me the same. We would work together. Only one Australian I remember very well, Alan Cooper, a, friend, a good friend of mine. He was teaching in upper classes, uh, grade nine. And I was teaching in grades seven and eight. So we were very good friends, you know. We'd go out and drink together, do everything together. You know, drink was forbidden. But I go to his house and he say, have a cup of coffee and have a glass of beer before you go. And we were, we were very good mates. And there are some Australians like that, you know. They were, I would reckon that they are journalists and teachers and medical officers. They tried to understand people more better, you know, and I think uh, that uh, that was one of the problems they created themselves. 
not friend to the natives. And you know, in uh, Ella Beach, special branch people will come and get me and Nombri from administrative staff college down there. Tell us, give us more information on what's happening. And of course, we were already politic. I was already politicking. Yeah. You know, and I said to special branch people, yeah. I'll come and give you information, don't worry. I know all the information. I was giving the bullshit and really information was in me. <laughs> so that's a kind of thing, you know. Because that, that created a, not animosity, but a, a kind of, you know, dislike. Mm. Dislike for people, you see. So. Do you think Australia should be paying more attention to Papua New Guinea these days? These days, yes, Australia should be paying more, you know. I, I would have, I would have thought that independence, you know, um, we would have um, keep Australian teachers here, you know, our, our schools. There was a very rapid, rapid localization, wasn't there? Rapid Lots of people went. Rapid localization, and um, and that's uh, that's quite true too. Rapid localization and trying to do things quickly. And uh, well, in our part too, we, I was the com main contributor. Because I, I wanted to see them go out, but I didn't look at education and health. And consider myself, I should have considered that area and keep Australians on that area, for example, you know. That period leading into um, self-government and independence was a very challenging one, wasn't it? You had Papua Basena trying to break Papua away, you had Bougainville troubles, you had trouble in the Matangan. Yes, it was. Looking back on it, are you a little surprised how well you managed to pull it all together and get PNG yes. to independence? Yes. A good thing about New Britain was uh, I knew Arabon very well <coughs> because my father spent 30 years as a Australian uh, policeman. And I knew the tall eyes when I grew up, you know. And uh, that's the attachment I have about my, my father. And the uh, same in New Ireland too, because he was an instructor in the depot in Rabaul. He knew a lot of New Guinea Islanders like Paleo, for example. Paleo and I became members of yeah. House Assembly at the same time. Paleo from Manus. Paleo Malwat, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And the uh, good thing about it is my father had a lot of influence in the uh, New Guinea Police Force and Royal Constabulary later. And I think that's the that's thing that brought me about to go to know a lot of people in the islands, yeah. So, Michael, I won't keep you much longer, but I'm, I'm interested now that you're no longer in the parliament, do you have any views about the amount of money that is now going under these electoral development funds to individual members of parliament and whether it is being well spent or not? I don't think money is well spent. I, can honestly tell you, I know that because I spend all the money, I have all my returns, never question on my returns. Everything I spend, you have to get the return to the ombudsman, they look at it, go to the finance, they have a look at it, everything is on the line. People are not spending the money as they they should spend, you know. I think a lot of money has been given out uh, to our people, but. Uh, the way they spend it, the way they draw money around is not, a, not the right way to do it. Do you think it's a mistake having so much money at the available for members of no, parliament? It's not, it's not a mistake. I think it's good to help members to be able to stay in one job for a long time. I was fortunate because I became the leader four times in the country. So. I able to maintain. I was able to maintain my contacts in the villages and inlets and islands and everywhere, everywhere. And I use radio all the time. Every time I go from Parliament in Port Mosby, I broadcast to the East Sipic, the two Sipic provinces, broadcast to them, give them the details, everything we do as members of Parliament. Or next year, uh, next Parliament is going to sit. We have proposed legislation to bring. This legislation meaning law affecting to this type of uh, life that people want to live. So I was educating my electorate. My electorate, as I said, 
most uh, not respectable, respectable because of me, they respect me, but educated because I give them information all the time on everything that I do. So I'm well kept in the logbook. Sir Michael, you're going to be very much missed. So thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Nice talking to you again. Thank you.